let's go to some idioms. The idiom we gotta start out with is the easiest idiom because it means easy. A piece of cake. When something is a piece of cake, it's easy. It is very, very easy. Like English is a piece of cake. Yes or no? Do you feel like English is a piece of cake? A piece of cake. No? <laughs> Cry emoji. What do you mean? No. Oh yeah, you can also say of course cry emoji. Very smart blue. Of course. It's so easy. I'm fine. Um, a piece of cake. Can you make a sentence with uh, a piece of cake? Tell me. Put the idiom in a sentence. A piece of cake. Of course? Good. I believe you. English is not a piece of cake, but also it's not among the hardest languages to learn. True. My exam was a piece of cake. Nice. The lesson is a piece of cake. Exactly. My homework was a piece of cake. Great. Great. The ex <laughs> this exercise is a piece of cake. I'm going to give you more difficult idioms. This is the easiest one. Well, well done. Yes, a piece of cake. You got it. You got it. Um, another important idiom for English learners is break the ice. To break the ice, which is very hard for English learners. To break the ice, not literally break ice. To break the ice is, of course, to start a conversation. To start a conversation, to break the ice, one of the big English challenges. <laughs> For most people, when you're shy, to break the ice, you got it. Break the ice. She told a joke to break the ice. You can tell a joke to break the ice. You can give a compliment to break the ice. To break the ice. Yes. Yes. When you know how to break the ice, conversations are a piece of cake. When you know how to break the ice, conversations are a piece of cake. Got it? It's hard for you to break the ice with strangers. I understand. That's why we have such an amazing community where you can practice. Learnwithlucas.com Next. Hit the nail on the head. To hit the nail on the head. Well, it's quite a common among, among Americans to use. You absolutely hit the nail on the head. What does it mean? To hit the nail on the head. To hit the nail on the head. On point. Yes. Using a phrasal verb to explain an idiom to be on point. <laughs> to be right. Not just to be right. To be exactly right. To be 100% right. You hit the nail on the head when you said you need to practice to improve your English. To be exactly right. To be 100% right. To hit the nail on the head. Well done. Um, you hit the nail on the head with your answer. Every Wednesday, every Saturday in our community, in our live streams, when you hit the nail on the head, I will say your name because you are the number one. Hit the nail on the head. Well done. Then, of course, you have uh, two phrasal verbs, uh, idioms. Two idioms which kind of mean the same thing. To spill the tea or let the cat out of the bag. To spill the tea or let the cat out of the bag. 
two idioms with the same meaning, which means to spill a secret, to reveal a secret. Come on, let's get out of the bag. How does your skin look so good? Come on, who's your boyfriend? Spill the tea. <laughs> to tell a secret, to, to reveal a secret. Not just to tell, but sometimes by accident. That's why they say it. Like, oh yeah, he spilled the tea already. I know there's going to be a surprise party. He spilled the tea. <laughs> Spill the tea, let the cat out of the bag. It's like gossiping, absolutely, sometimes by accident. Let's grab a coffee. Cheers. Last of my coffee. Bye-bye, coffee. Spill the tea, let the cat out of the bag to reveal a secret. He let the cat out of the bag about the surprise party. He didn't listen. He spilled the tea about the surprise party. I hate those people. All the effort for such a, for, for a surprise party and somebody spills the tea. True story, uh, exactly. There are always people like that, right? Always people like that. It happens. They cannot not spill the tea. They got to just... Mm. All right. A very common one when, uh, when you're sick. Who can think about it? What is the common idiom when you are sick? I don't know. I'm feeling... Do you know this idiom? Elben. Perfect. Under the weather. I don't know. I'm feeling under the weather. Which means you're feeling sick. Probably a fever or a cold. I'm feeling under the weather. When you feel sick or unwell. I'm feeling under the weather. Exactly. Under the weather. I'm from the Netherlands. Nice to meet you. Avrieli, welcome back. He is feeling under the weather today and won't come to work. Yeah, when you're feeling under the weather, you cannot work. We are saying under the weather because of the weather. You know, sometimes you feel the weather makes you sick. So we say under the weather because of the weather. You're sick. <laughs> hmm. All right. Under the weather when you feel sick. So... Those are at least a few idioms in different situations. You have a piece of cake talking about something that's easy. For example, English, right? Very simple English. Uh, break the ice in a social situation to start a conversation to break the ice. Hit the nail on the head. You're exactly right. You're the number one. You're perfect. To spill the tea, which I do by accident, but some people do because they love drama. Yeah, you love the drama, right? You like to spill the tea, right? I can see you. <laughs> um, I, I dropped the cup. I put the cup down and I dropped the cup, but it's empty. <laughs> I almost spilled the tea literally again. I'm very clumsy, okay? I'm very clumsy. I always spill my tea. And of course, under the weather, when you feel sick, under the weather. Um, but there are some tough ones. I will want to give you a few more, which you can use for English learning, okay? When you are talking about English learning, I want to give you a few specific idioms. For example, to bite the bullet. To bite the bullet. Less common, but definitely an idiom. To bite the bullet means you are facing a difficult situation and you keep going. When there's a difficult situation and you keep going, you are biting the bullet. As in a gun bullet. You're biting the bullet. You are facing a difficult situation. For example... 
You're shy and you're doing speaking practice. You are biting the bullet. Yeah, don't give up. Never give up. Bite the bullet. You go through a tough situation bravely. Bite the bullet. Great one for English learning, right? Another one would be to burn the midnight oil. To burn the midnight oil. To work late into the night. Sometimes you're very busy. You don't have time for English during the day. You burn the midnight oil. You practice late at night to improve. I think we've all done it at least once. Where you just work late into the night. Finishing your homework. That project. Um, burning the midnight oil. To improve your English. To burn the midnight oil. To work overtime. Sure. It can also be for your job to burn the midnight oil. I hope not though. I hope not. <laughs> and sometimes, guys... You just have to... Who knows what is the idiom? Sometimes you just have to... What's the idiom? Hit the books. Plural. Exactly. Sometimes you just have to hit the books. Hit the books. Get your head down. Hit the books. Get to work. Not literally hit the books, by the way. Beowulf. Great book. Um, you gotta hit the books. You gotta get down and just study hard. It's not always about just speaking, practicing. Sometimes with idioms or phrasal verbs or vocabulary. You gotta hit the books. Just gotta get it done. <laughs> well done. Well done. To hit the books. Not literally hitting a book, okay? Don't do that. Don't do that. Three, va phrase <laughs> Three idioms that have to do with English studying, right? To bite the bullet. To go through a difficult situation. Break the ice. To have a conversation with someone. To burn the midnight oil, to work late at night, to improve, to get better, to get things done. And to hit the books. To really focus on something. To learn, to study hard. I think they're pretty good and pretty useful. Lastly, I want to give you one more. I want to give you one more. I don't know how far we are. I don't think we made it to 10 for idioms, but... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Cool number. I want to give you one more idiom, which is the ball is in your court. The ball is in your court. This means that now it is up to you. It is your responsibility, right? I give you the lesson. I give you the content. I give you the live streams. What you want to do with it is up to you. The ball is in your court. Are you going to sit down and hit the books? Are you going to join our community and talk to people? Are you going to open your mouth and break the ice? It's up to you. The ball is in your court. Because no matter how good the English teacher is, if you don't do anything with the ball, you're not going to learn English. You can have the number one English teacher in the world. If you don't do anything with what they say, what they say you should do, nothing is going to work out. So, I want to leave this short idiom class with the ball is in your court. Got it? I believe in you. I believe in you. The ball is in your court. Don't you like talking about balls? There are so many balls. Big balls, small balls, round balls, oval balls. Just think about it. Basketball, golf ball, bowling ball, tennis ball, football. 
I don't know what you're talking thinking about, but not sure what you're thinking about. <laughs> well done, everybody. Give you an applause. Three, two, one. <laughs>